Thank you, guys. That was fabulous. I could keep doing that for about another two hours. Um, it's good to see everybody. God bless you. How you doing? We're okay? Okay, good. Well, I'm excited. Um, today, I have the pleasure of introducing Pastor Chris Delmage. Um, I'm excited about what Pastor Chris has for us. I'm excited about um, his sense of the importance of practical theology, right? being practical in, in what we do, uh, thinking in terms of what it means to be a disciple maker, being passionate about the gospel. Uh, this is a man who has 25 years of um, ministry experience. Right now, currently, he's the executive assistant, executive assistant to the superintendent of the metro region of New York, um, which is part of the Assemblies of God, which is absolutely incredible, uh, a loving husband to his uh, wife, Crystal Bell, and, and proud father of his four children. Uh, he, he's a man who truly believes what he says. Uh, I, I took some time and went back and looked at some of the other times he's come and spoken to us as a community, and it, it's, it, it always it means such a great deal. And so what I want to say is this. Please allow the spirit, what the Lord was just doing in that time of ministry, to continue to speak through his word. I love that we as a community take time to exalt the Lord through praise. Now we need to exalt him through the preaching of the word and through, and through the meditation of the word. And this is what I'm going to ask for you to do today. Would you intercede on, on the behalf of Pastor Chris? You're part of what's going to happen over the next 30 minutes, right? It's important to understand that the spirit of God is going to move through him as he proclaims the word. And then you are going to listen. You're going to exalt. You're going to actually be edified. And then you're going to minister to him by praying that the Lord continues to minister. Will you uh, help me in welcoming Pastor Chris? Bless you. Bless you, brother. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be back. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I appreciate that word. Can you intercede on behalf of Pastor Chris? Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Uh, I, I can't stay in public speaking. Uh, it's, it's, you know, but... I truly believe that God has um, just a word, uh, not just for you, but for me in this time and space. And so if it's all right with you, can we bow our heads? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Spend some time. Lord, we thank you, God, that uh, you have us here in this moment, Lord, of time. And we thank you, God. We recognize your presence in this place, in this space, Lord. And Lord, I don't believe in luck or chance, but there's a reason why I'm here. There's a reason why we're all in this room. And so, God, we make ourselves available. We make our hearts and our minds available to your spirit to speak into our hearts right now, to communicate with us, give us insight on who we are and where we are and what we are called to do, who we're called to be. And so I invite your kingdom to invade our kingdom, invade the way we think, invade our minds and our hearts. Lord, by all means, you have permission to rearrange priorities in the name of Jesus, that your will will be done on earth as it's already uh, completed in heaven. So thank you, God, for this moment, oh God, may your grace be a part of this entire process right now. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all of the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. And amen, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. I'm, listen, I'm so glad to be here, and I'm glad that you're here. I'm supposed to jump in and preach, but even while I was there and I was worshiping, I just, ah, oh, I hate when God does this. I, like, I just want to preach and then get out of the way. But let me just say this, just in case. Uh, okay, listen, you should be absolutely overjoyed that you are alive right now. I want you to know that right now. I don't know who needs to hear this. Please understand, I'm not that spooky preacher. I'm not, listen, I just want to preach and get out of the way. But I'm there and I, I, I'm, I'm standing there and I'm trying to worship. But I just have this strong feeling. Listen, I need to say this. Whoever you are, life is awesome and you are, you should be overjoyed that God has you in this place, in this space right now. I just want to preach. Ah. But let me, all right, let's, we're going to pray one more time. Let's pray one more time. I, uh, let's pray one more time. Here, listen, listen, listen. We need to come against any spirit of depression, anxiety. Whew. Yes, I'm on the right track. <laughs> I hate, listen, I, I'm, you know, I don't like this, but listen, we, we serve a God that's real. Real God because we got real problems. And we got real issues. It's not fake. Either God is real or we all crazy. And 
I want you to know right now, I'm supposed to preach this sermon. I got 30 minutes and this is taking up some of the time I have to preach, but this needs to happen. You need to recognize whoever you are, that God loves you. You need to recognize whoever you are, that no matter what you're going through, no matter, no matter what you're dealing with, it's never going to be too big for God to be a part of what's going on in your life. Listen, I don't know who needs to hear this, but there's nothing you can do right now that would make God love you more. There's nothing you can do right now to make God love you less. He loves you with an everlasting love. It's already complete. So you can't get your life together for him to finally approve you. You are already approved. In fact, understand, he chose you over his son, Jesus Christ. And that's why you have the ability to come before him in grace. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I'm going to simply say God is good. God is good, God is good, God is good, God is good, and your life matters. You matter. If nobody else sees you, I want you to know today that God sees you. He knows you. He knows where you've been. He knows where you're going. He refuses to give up on you. He has reckless love for you. And so here's what we're going to do before I jump into this quick sermon. We're going to pray against every foul spirit that whispers to you that you ain't no good. We're going to pray against every foul spirit that says you are nothing. And we're going to rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Can we do that? Church? Can we? I said church, but mine's we, we together. Can we do that? All right, so real quick, stand up where you are. We're going to pray one more time. 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 That devil is a liar trying to mess up my sermon. I just want to come and preach and get up out of here. But that devil, listen, 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 listen. And listen, don't matter. We're, 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 we're together in this. We're together in this. And I want you to close your eyes and we're going to begin to pray. And if you listen, you're already filled and saturated with the spirit of God. You pray in the spirit wherever you are right here, right now. We're going to break that so that we can now worship with joy and worship with freedom. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, oh God, that we get to breathe air. We thank you, oh God, that we get to live, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that life is worth living because of who who you are and because of what you've already done Lord I am nothing without you but you see value in me and so God I we come against every foul spirit that are whispering negativity thoughts and and ideas to your children father in the name of Jesus we rebuke every foul spirit that's suggesting a death and and then suicide we come against every foul spirit that's overcoming your children with anxiety and father we speak life we speak speak blessings we speak clarity of thought in Jesus name Holy Spirit we welcome you into this place we welcome your God to cover your children today in the name of Jesus and we thank you for the spirit of liberty we thank you oh God for your spirit of grace we thank you oh God for your presence Lord because Lord there's joy when you're around oh God and so we thank you Lord forgive us of every sin Father, forgive us of every thought, every action, Lord, everything that we've ever done that does not please you. Father, I bring that before you right now. And we say, Lord, we're sorry. Forgive us of every sin. We invite your Holy Spirit to change the way we think about these things. And we invite you to be a part of our life, be a part of this journey, Lord, as we get to know you more. And Father, with that being said, we honor you, Lord. We glorify you. We give you the highest praise because you are worthy of all the praise you refuse to give up on me you refuse to turn your back on me and for that lord i shout hallelujah i give you all the praise i give you all the honor and i give you all the glory in jesus name we pray and everybody says come on let's give the find at least four or five people give them a high five give them a high five and say yo the lord is in charge the lord is in charge give them a high five and say it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right and right before you sit down let's give the lord another hand cup of praise hallelujah another hand cup of praise another hand cup of praise another hand cup of praise hallelujah you may be seated you may be seated all right so 
So the powers that be, does, is that subtracted from the time we... <laughs> it's all right. Listen, thank you so much for that. I don't know who that's for, but that's for you. I want you to know the Lord loves you. I know what it's like to be in a church situation and battling with whether or not I'm good enough. I know what it's like to graduate Bible college and be a pastor and still feel like a failure. I know what it's like. And I know what it's like to have Satan always hounding you. And, and there's things about you that you wish could change just like that. And you see other people and you wish that you could have that freedom that they have. I'm here to let you know that God still loves you. He still chooses you. He still sees you. And the testings that you are going through, watch this, is for your good. The last time I was here, I shared with you uh, one of my dad's favorite verses, Romans 8, 28, right? And, all, and we know God works all things together for good to them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. And I explained to you how much I couldn't stand that verse. Well, I'd like to share with you my dad's other verse that he loved so much. And it's found in James chapter 1, verses 2. And this is what it says. It says, consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its perfect results so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. I can't stand that verses. I can't stand those verses either. I, I, I remember going through some difficult times and I, I would, you know, and, and, and whenever I go through some difficult times, I'd find myself in my little prayer closet at my house. I used to live in the parsonage and in the parsonage is a place and I, I'd go in there with the expectation that I'm going to come out of this prayer closet with an incredible word of revelation, with an incredible strategy of revolution that will change my life. All I need is that word, God, that will set me on fire and make me feel like a conqueror. And I, I need that word that will ensure that I'm the head and not the tail. And I'll never forget this one time I was in the prayer closet and I felt the Lord take me straight to this verse. James chapter 1, verse 2. Consider it all joy when you go through various trials. And that's not the verse I was looking for. I can't go into detail, but there's some people that were getting on my nerves and I was hoping God would just remove them. <laughs> Can I tell you, that's not a good prayer. God is not a hit man, he's not the Godfather. You can't just ask him to make people disappear. But a lot of times when we go through some difficult times, it was, it's interesting that the Lord brought me to this verse uh, James chapter 1, he said, count it all joy when you go through these various trials knowing that the testing of your faith will produce. I didn't like that verse because it felt like as if God was forcing me to be happy about things that were making me sad. If I could be, I hate that part of my relationship with the Lord where, you know, I, I grew up in Brooklyn. So here's the thing, in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, if you mess with me, I mess with you. And so when you tell me some foolishness about turning the other cheek, mm. and I remember as a new believer crying in a chapel service at Zion at North Point, I remember being at the altar crying. And you know, when you're at the altar, and then we don't know what you're going through, but people come and put their hand on your back. Hallelujah, Lord, touch him. Jesus, Jesus. And it was this dude who was touching me. And he, that's the dude I wanted to punch in the face. <laughs> the dude is touching me like, yo, like you, you, <laughs> yo. And he had his hand on my arm, and he was like, Lord, comfort him, comfort him, because I'm sobbing. What he did not know, I was sobbing, not because I was weak. I was sobbing because I wanted to choke him out. <laughs> and I knew if I did that, I'm, that's it, I'm done with school and God will be happy. And so have you ever been in a situation where you're upset because you know what you want to do is not what God wants you to do? Yes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yes. And you're upset and you're angry, you're emotional. And, 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 and if I had my way, God would do what I want him to do and we call a day. But then he comes across with this incredible, powerful verse. He says, when you're in those situations where you're being tested and tried and, and it feels like everything is going wrong, he says, I want you to count it all joy. And that makes me angry because how can I count it all joy 
when it's these people that are making me cry. I get confused emotionally. And, and if you're honest with some of us, it's these type of messed up, conflicting emotions that make Christianity even difficult to deal with. It, it, sometimes we just want to put it on a shelf for a while. But, but, but I believe that God brought me here today to kind of help us all walk through this process of what it means to count it all joy. And so here's a couple of words because I know we could think about joy and for me to understand the power of this word, the spirit of God said, forget about the joy part because the joy part is distracting you. I was getting distracted with this whole joy because like, nah, I don't feel joy and I don't want to hear what you, forget about joy. Let's take a look at some other words in this passage of scripture that can help you. And so the first word that it says, says, consider all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, no Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Knowing. It's, the, it's, the, it's that first word that the Spirit of God brought my attention to, knowing. The Greek word for knowing is genosko. It means to have intimate knowledge of, usually because of repetition, to, to, to have a deep understanding of something because you're constantly around it. You're constantly engaging in it. It's repetitious. And, and so because it's repetitious, you're able now to, to kind of uh, have an idea of what's going to happen next. You, you, you can now uh, uh, have a sense of what's happening next. The Bible lets me know, and, and, and what the Lord was helping me understand, he said, I'm struggling with the joy because I don't know God as much as I thought I knew him. I, I, I thought I had a relationship with him, but apparently my relationship with the Lord was not as intimate as I thought it was because even now I wasn't able to anticipate what would happen next. But the Bible says you have to count all joy, right, when you go through these various trials because there's an intimate knowing of what's happening next. I, I, I didn't know that I was raised in church. My parents are pastors and everything like that. You could be churchy and still not have an intimate relationship with the Lord. That's like saying just because you go to Valley Forge, you Christian. Mm. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize, you know, my wife I, I've, I've known my wife for a very long time. In fact, I fell in love with my wife when I was about 13 years old. And she discovered me when she was 17. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. First time I saw her, I was like, yo, I'm in love. And she didn't even know I was alive until, you know, like four years later. But that's all right. You know, for all the brothers in the house, come on now. You just got to keep it going. Keep, keep the hope alive. And, and so I tracked her down. Some people call it stalking, whatever. I call it being persistent. I call it persistence, did her homework, changed up my classes so I could be in her classes, whatever it is, what it is, but we married, someone say hallelujah. And, and, and so, and so listen, I was with her, I was with her. And, 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 and when she finally, when she, when she finally said yes, it was senior year. And I was like, yes. And, and from that point on, we were together, we were together. And, and my wife and I, we're so close. We've been together since 1992. And, and we've been together and we know each other to the point where we finish each other's sentences. And, 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 and we get the jokes. Like we could be in a room with a bunch of people. And I look at an apple, she look at the apple. <laughs> And it was like, what? Well, I said, you won't get it. You won't get it. It's, that's genosco. When you have an intimacy with someone because you're around them so much and you, you, you can anticipate what they're going to do. I, I'll never forget our third year, our third year of marriage because I come from a family where we just love to celebrate stuff. And I'm a big, you know, I celebrate birthdays and anniversaries and, oh, you just got a job, y'all, let's celebrate. Like, that's me. Like, I was, you know, and, and, but she doesn't come from that. Her family don't celebrate anything. And so when she, so when we got married, when we got married, you know, she realized, I'm a celebrant and I always big things up and it was Valentine's Day our third year uh, being married and I said you know what I think you know she swept me too much man like I'm gonna act like I ain't doing nothing for Valentine's Day this year so I didn't say nothing about it no nothing no card but see at home I already had uh, the rose petals on the ground and when you open up the door I had chocolates on the table and then I also had a dozen peach roses not just regular roses peach roses roses and I had it all set up. She was working a 12 hour shift. I picked her up from the hospital cause she was a nurse and I'm driving in the car. No, no, no romantic music playing, nothing. And I'm waiting for her, I said, excuse me, do you know what today is? But she was just chilling. I said, mm, started getting worried. Hmm. Pulled up to the house. At the time I was living in my, my dad's basement uh, apartment area. I pulled up to the door, nothing. 
like it's just a regular day. And I started getting scared. And she says, okay, all right, so what you up to? So what are you talking about? She says, listen, I know today's Valentine's Day. You're going to try to play me like you ain't doing nothing. I said, what are you talking about? Yo, oh, today's Valentine's Day? What? Get out of here. She says, stop. What am I going to do? I'm going to open the door. What, there's going to be rose petals on the ground? <laughs> right? I'm going to walk in. There's going to be like candy or chocolate on the table. And then somewhere in the house, I guarantee it's going to be like, what, peach roses? Open the door, there's rope, roses on the floor. And Genosco. It's, it's, it's having an intimacy or knowledge of, of, of knowing someone so well that you can anticipate what's going to happen next. I'm here to let you know, God allows us to go through certain things so that our relationship with him becomes deeper and, and more, more enriched. Why? Because he's calling you into having an intimate knowledge of who he is. It's harder to understand what's going on when you really don't know God the way you think you should. Because it requires an intimacy in knowing. And the Bible says this. He says, he says, uh, knowing that the testing of your faith. During COVID, I lost my older brother. His name was Audley. He was actually adopted. And this... I think there's no other testing than when you lose someone you love. Especially when you have a relationship with God because you know that God is omnipotent. You know he's omniscient. So it's not that he couldn't do it. But then I always question why wouldn't he do it for me? Why wouldn't he save my brother? Why wouldn't he save my auntie? And it's a, it's a tough, tough, tough test. My, my, my brother Audley, he was adopted. He's from the street. Um, my dad was having a prayer meeting one Tuesday night, and my brother Audley walked into the meeting with a gun, a loaded gun in his hand. He says, now, talk to me. Talk me out of blowing my head off. That was the prayer meeting. <laughs> my father talked to him and prayed with him, took the gun, and then adopted him. That's my dad, yeah. Then adopted him, and he died during COVID messed me up. He's the one that taught me how to fight. He's the one that taught me how to lift weights. I struggled with that. It was with his death, I had to bring this verse and deal with this verse because why would a God who loves me allow this to happen? And coming out of that time of prayer, it's almost like God would say, Chris, it's because you don't really know me yet. What do you mean I don't know you? I've been a pastor already for like 23, 24 years. He said, if you knew me, then you wouldn't question my love for you. It was crazy because in, in the same month, I lost my, my childhood friend to COVID. He was the guy that taught me all about hip hop because rap music wasn't allowed in my house. So I was like, <laughs> we all got that one friend, right? Yeah, it's a, <laughs> and, he, you know, and, and he taught me basketball. And when he died, I lashed out and trashed the room because I couldn't believe that happened. The Bible says, count it all joy when you go through these testings and trials, knowing that the testing of your faith, that word testing in the Greek, it means to stretch. It means to test the limits of something, to see how far it would go. It's interesting because I don't want God to test me that way, but I didn't realize that it's the testing that brings you into a more intimate relationship with him. And if you're like me, I don't want to be stretched. If you're like me, I don't want to be pushed to the limit, but I didn't realize that if I'm intimately aware of who God is, I would welcome the testing. Old school Pentecostal household I grew up in, and in Brooklyn, they used to play football on Sundays. And so because of that, I wasn't allowed to play football. But then we moved to Long Island, and they played football on Saturdays. So the first thing I did was sign up. I said, yo, we're playing football, right? And most of the dumb management in our family, we're, all, we're large frame. But it's not because we work out. It's, that's just, we just call that country big. That's it. It's just big. It's peanut butter and jelly and milk big, right? We didn't really work out. And so one of the things that happened was when we went down, when I went down to the weight room, 
people already assumed because I was a big guy at the time that I was strong and I lifted weights. I've never seen a bench press before. I didn't know what that was. And so there was this kid and his name, he's a pretty boy. His name was Angel. Yes, pretty boy named Angel. Pretty boy. And he was on the bench press and he had 135 pounds. For some of you, that, that's the bar. The bar is 45. And then he had two 45 uh, pound plates on there. And he was there. And he was like, <laughs> and he picked, ah! And when, they, when guys work out, they make a lot of noise. Ah! And, he, ah! and he's banging, ah! 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 And he put on, oh! And everybody said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they saw me. They said, yo, big man, you next. They call me big man because, you know, big man, you next. And so I said, I bet, because if, if pretty boy Angel could do this, I could do this. Never, never did bench press in my life. Went under there and I saw, <laughs> and no kind of muscle memory, no kind of coordination. They didn't have the safety collars on the end of the, and so when I picked it up, this thing was heavier. This thing dropped on my chest. One plate fell down. The other plate fell down. And everybody is shocked because a person with my size should easily. I was embarrassed. I failed. The coach said, Dalmatch, come here. What's going on? And I had to confess. I said, I never, I never did this before. He said, all right, well. No problem. I'll get you on a schedule. And he gave me the exercise schedule. The exercise schedule said, I need to start with just the bar. Brothers and sisters in the house right now. There's nothing more embarrassing than a big man like me working out with just the bar. I had to humble myself with just this bar. And then the girl tennis team would come down and see me with the bar. And they would laugh. <laughs> Count it all joy when you go through various trials. Can I, can, I, can I encourage somebody today? Never despise those moments of humility in your life where it seems that you've lost, when it seems that you've failed. I'm here to let you know, don't despise those days, those small beginnings. When you hear the laughter, when you feel the judgment, I'm here to let you know, God is still working in you. I had the bar and I had to do it 15 times, three sets. And it seemed so embarrassing for people to think I had strength only to realize I didn't have anything. But I had a coach who understood the process and he says, when you begin to lift this way, your body will now respond with coordination. Don't worry about them. Just listen to what I'm telling you to do. And I would do it three sets of 15. And I would, and what I didn't realize in that season of humiliation, that because I was still willing to work and because I was still willing to be tested, there was strength that was building that was there but because it was never used, I never realized it was there. And I started lifting. Here, check this out. Then the coach said, I'm gonna add 10 pounds. All of a sudden, the adding of resistance wasn't bad. The test becoming harder was not bad because now I had Genosco in the process. I recognized as he's adding more weight, it's increasing my strength. And so he added 10 and 15, and now I'm working the process. 135, 155, 210, 275, 310, 315. See? Have you ever considered that God is allowing you to go through certain things, not because he hates you, but because he knows you're stronger than you are? 
has it ever occurred to you that maybe you stumbled into a situation and your life was now filled with shame and embarrassment simply so that he can strip all the weight and actually start to get things working in you that you never knew were possible and if you would stick with the process if you stick with the process you'll start to recognize that this test was never designed to destroy you but it was designed to bring you into somebody that you never knew was possible see I was happy when my coach would say let's try 250 I was happy when he added resistance and now that I'm in ministry the things that used to bother me 10 years ago don't bother me now because I get happy when I get resistance because I know that there's a God who's teaching me that through these testings I get stronger can someone say amen don't waste your tears on feeling sorry for yourself because you're going through some tough times. You best believe you might as well give God thanks and say, Lord, thank you for trusting me with more weight. You're teaching me and you're bringing me through something so I could learn. Here's the last point and then, then we'll pray real quick. He says this. He says, uh, when you encounter verse, you're knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. That word endurance in Greek, it simply means just to stay and remain. It means to be so stubborn enough that you're not leaving. I didn't realize that God allows us to go through testing so that things can be produced in us. Sometimes when you're raised in a Christian Pentecostal circle, your, your way of thinking that you receive stuff is to ask the pastor to pray for you. He splash you with some oil, you fall down, you get back up, now you got peace. Not, 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 now you have faith. What you don't realize, more often than not, uh, your, your, your giftings are shaped and, and, and empowered by what you go through. Because everything that has value is tested. Everything of value is tested. God loves you so much that he will allow you to go through testings. In fact, it's not because he doesn't know what you can do. It's because you don't know what you can do. God knows you have what it takes. God knows that he's called you and empowered you and anointed you. You just don't know how anointed you are until you find yourself in a good fight. And so in the testing, it produces this thing called endurance you never knew you could fight until you didn't know you could pray until didn't know but God values you that's why he allows you to go through what you go through years ago I used to go to UFC gym in New Hyde Park because I figured since I'm this big I might as well do something else besides just preach so I was trying to fight I was trying to be a black Chuck Norris So I started doing Muay Thai boxing. I want to do some. I want to do some damage, you know. And I go to this, to this gym and you see this guy kicking the heavy bag, and when he kicked this bag, it's whack, and it's a whack, whack, whack. It just echoes in the whole gym. Whack, whack, whack. I say yes. That's what I want to do, Lord. Yes. Whack, 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 whack. whack. I said yes. So I signed up. I signed up to be a Muay Thai boxer. And I had to buy the gloves, I had to buy the wraps, I had to buy head, I had to buy all these things. So I did it. And I was ready because, yo, we're going to learn some double uppercuts. We're going to learn some flying knee strikes. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, we're going to do it all. And so we get there for the first lesson. And for the first lesson, you know what we did? We ran. We ran. We ran in place. We ran around the gym. We ran around the octagon. We ran sideways. We ran backwards. And then he introduced this demonic thing called burpees. Mm -mm. From, from the, the deepest pits of hell. Burpees? No, a man didn't come up with that. That was Satan himself. Burpees? He loved burpees. Let's go. We're doing burpees. And so we did that the first day. And we did that the second day. And we did the third day. And by the end of the first and second week, all we did was run. And I said, nah, son, I didn't sign up for track and field. No. Mm -mm. And so before the next session, I saw, I saw my, my trainer and I went to him early. I said, hey, yeah, listen, I, I don't think, I don't think this is for me. He says, why? I said, well, you know, I was expecting to learn how to, you know, jab and double uppercuts and knee strikes. 
but you, you got me running. No, I'm not here to run. And he says, he laughed. He laughed, not because I was funny. He laughed because the whole situation was, he said, I know, don't worry about it. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. I said, I know, it, I know you know what you're doing. But I also know what I'm going to do. I'm going to quit because I can't do this. I think, you know, this doesn't work. And then he said this statement to me that made me go, wow. He said, the things that I need to teach you, your body can't handle it yet. And I looked at him because I felt like he was throwing shade regarding my girth and my lack of... <laughs> That's... What are you trying to say? I'm fat? You trying to say I'm out of shape? What? What are you trying to say? He says, yeah, yeah, you're out of shape. I said, what do you mean? He says, for me to teach you how to throw a punch, for me to teach you how to block, it would require you to stay in a stance. It would require your arms to stay in a certain way. And right now, you don't have the constitution just to keep your arms up. And if I was to teach you all this important knowledge, you'll do it incorrectly because your body is not conditioned to handle it some of us in this room God has already empowered you and called you for some stuff but the things that he's called you to do you are not in shape for yet and that's why you go through what you go through because there's a conditioning that's happening in your body that you don't recognize yet some of us have gone through some stuff wondering why God hates us, not recognizing God knows you can handle it because he's called you for something else. And when he told me that, I said, oh, okay. And then I quit. I said, I ain't doing this no more. <laughs> There's some of you in this room, you were born in a family where you're the only one that's saved. That's because God is calling you. For some of us in this room, we turned our backs on God and our life was kind of screwed up a bit, but we still here. You know what? That's because God is calling you. For some of us, we've been in a family that was too perfect and you just didn't fit in. You seem like the one that was always messing up. You want to know why? Because God has called you. For some of us, you're wondering whether or not that calling is real because of the things you're dealing with even right now. And I'm here to let you know it's because he's calling you. Now is not the time to give up. Now is the time to recognize that his selection of you requires you to dig in and produce endurance. Are you willing to stick it out? Are you willing to stay? Are you willing to pray even deeper and harder and longer? Are you willing to trust God with your most vulnerable parts of your mind and your heart? Because he still calls you and he still loves you. Today, I just want to pray with you, especially for those of you who know the testings that you've gone through just about feel like it was going to kill you and wipe you out. Some of you are in this place ready to call it quits and give up. But I'm here to let you know God brought me here on this day to remind you he loves you. And he wants you to be joyful to know that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. But through every testing, he's building some. He says, and let endurance have its perfect work in you. In other words, you're the only person that can stop this process of growth by giving up. God says, get out of the way. Allow this endurance to have its perfected worth in you. Amen. Bow your heads with me real quick. Come on. Father, I thank you, God, for this time together, and I thank you for this word. I thank you, Lord, that it's not by luck or chance, it's not serendipitous, Lord, but it's by your divine appointment, Lord, that you have called us. Some of us, Lord, you know where we come from. You know what we've been through. And sometimes we find ourselves wondering why, but God, I recognize, Lord, you have an assignment for us. You've called us. You've chosen us. And it's not because we're strong, but it's because you're strong in us. And so, Father, for each and every person in this room that might feel like 
giving up or might feel like maybe this is the wrong place for the being or maybe they're wondering whether or not, oh God, that you're for them. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that in this moment they will begin to see that the testing that they're going through is to show their value. And so Holy Spirit, do a work that only you can get credit for. In Jesus' name. Listen, if, if there one person say, Pastor Chris, can you pray with me real quick? I'd love to pray with you because maybe you feel like you can't take it anymore or you're ready to give up or it's just too much. And if that's you, guess what? Come on down. Come on down to the altar. Let's pray a little bit. Let, let this moment be cemented. Come on down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't worry. But I usually go, oh, close your eyes so that it could help. Whatever. Come on. Just come on down. Just come on down. Come on down. Like you already know this is what's going to happen. So let's just come. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Just come on down. Get down, let's begin to pray. Use this moment right here, right now. Some of you, you knew what this was about before I even opened my mouth. You know, you know God is not going to let you go. You know God is not going to give up on you. You know. And this is just the moment where you can solidify this and say, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you see your children. God, you see your, your warriors here. Father, only you know what they're going through. Only you know what they cry about when no one else sees. Only, Lord, you know what they're dealing with. The weaknesses that make them feel defeated regularly, Lord, you know. Wishing that they were different. Wishing that they had peace. Wishing that they had a different life. But God, I thank you for the testing. Lord, I thank you for the stretching. Lord, I thank you for the calling. Lord, I thank you for what you're calling them into. I pray in the name of Jesus that, God, you'd begin to do something special in their hearts and their lives. No need for fanfare, no need for fireworks, but, God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will begin to write something special on their heart and in their minds. Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to be brought in such a way that they're saturated with his presence and saturated with his power, that the tears that have been just falling down their faces, Lord, would not be wasted, but Father, that there'll be that there will be purpose in the pain, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for a fire, oh God, that, that increases because of, the, of the, the intensity of the test. I thank you, oh God, that even now their spiritual muscles are being put to the test. Their ability to pray, their ability to trust, their ability to hope, their ability to dream, their ability to be creative. I pray, oh God, that you'll stretch it to the limits, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that the supernatural wouldn't be hard for them because they've already been tested oh God in the name of Jesus I pray oh God for those who find themselves in a, in a, in a situation of humility and, and shame I pray oh God that they would not give up even if people might be laughing and snickering and, and judging we come against it now in Jesus name and we pray that God they will not quit we pray oh God that they'll endure we pray oh God that they'll have a spiritual stubbornness not to give up not to give in but God that they'll trust you in every area of their lives because oh God you see value in them and so God have your way I pray that they'll never forget this moment this moment of consecration where they made an altar before you they bowed before you and say Lord I'm not going to give up no matter how hard it gets I'm not going to give up I'm not going to give in but father in the name of Jesus make it personal to them today we surrender it all to you we surrender it all to you. In Jesus' name. Lord, just repeat after this, this prayer and make it your own. Just say, Lord Jesus, thank you for this moment. Thank you for every test that I've gone through. Even the things that I wish didn't happen. Lord, you know it happened. And Father, I bring it before you at this altar. I lay it on this altar, Lord. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. No matter how many times I fail, no matter how many times I fall, Lord, I'm sticking with your process today. We invite you, Lord God, into our lives to have your way, oh God. 
Thank you, Lord, that you don't make mistakes, but you do all things well. We give you praise and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Real quick, joyful knowing, jo joyful endurance. Praise God. That's incredible. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow for the second part of Pastor Chris's sermon. Lord bless you. Thank you. i